let's take a quick look at the best ways to do some quick color correction for internal and client reviews, not for final delivery. In my opinion, there are two good ways to get this done. Now, in this particular case, I've taken this original sequence, this offline cut, and I've already prepped it. If you're interested in learning more about how to prep a sequence and clean it up, check out this link. Now, in the meantime, we're gonna look at this sequence that is using log footage. You can tell because it's really faded and it doesn't pop, the colors aren't there. Um, it also has a mix of H.264 with it where the colors are there. So the first thing that I wanna do is we're gonna get some space in our timeline and I'm gonna grab all of these graphics right here because they're just in the way and get them out of our way. I'll move them up and then I'm also going to disable them. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go over to my graphics and grab an adjustment layer, and we're actually gonna rename this to LUT. All right, and I'm gonna grab the LUT and drop it on top of all of my clips. And the next thing, just so I know that this is a LUT visually, I am going to change the label color to yellow. All right, and it pops, great. Next thing is we're gonna come in here and add a Lumetri color effect. So I wanna come in here and you wanna drop a LUT on this. And in this case, we can use the Alexa default LUT. Actually, my personal preference is the Sony Burano warm LUT. I think this thing looks really nice, especially when you're working with Sony footage. So in that case, all we're gonna do is add this LUT to this Lumetri color effect, and that's it. We're not gonna to touch anything else on this adjustment layer. You can see immediately that these colors on our clips below it start to pop. See? All right, the next thing that we'll wanna do is scrub through and find any clips that aren't logged. So you can see that this one looks super saturated. So the best way to deal with this is I'm gonna to go to the head of that clip, grab my LUT, add and edit, go to the end of the clip and do the same thing. Now we can already tell that the next clip is also an H.264. So I'm actually gonna to go to the end of that clip as well, add and edit, and then delete this. All right, we're not gonna worry about analyzing these frames at the moment. Okay, the rest of these clips should all be log footage that this LUT will affect. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna place Lumetri color effects below this guy. So if I grab this, oh, it looks like this one is also, yes, we can look at this. This one is also H.264. So we're going to remove that one as well. It's always good to check. We're gonna grab that and delete you. Great. So I'm gonna grab this first clip and to adjust it, Let's get rid of this Lumetri color effect that was already on there, and I'm gonna add a new one. So Lumetri color, and the way that I want to adjust this clip in a super quick and simple motion is we can hit auto, but in my experience, it doesn't look that great. I wanna first crank up the exposure so that I can then turn up the contrast and get a good balance. Maybe bring this back down some. Okay, that's looking okay. Now we can also see that the temperature is way too blue. So we can mess with the temperature, and warm this up some. That's looking pretty good. Maybe a little magenta. So we're gonna pull this over here. That's somewhere around there. And that doesn't look too bad. It's definitely okay for an offline cut. Another way to deal with this, if you don't like using temperature and tint, is to, let's reset those. We can actually use our color wheels, which is my personal preference. So in general, everything in this clip is gonna be in the mid tone. So I'm gonna grab this color wheel and I'm gonna drag this up and warm up the clip maybe move it a little bit to the left to get some yellow. I always like to go up and down and left and right, never diagonally because it gives you a little more control over the color that you're actually dialing in. Now that to me looks a lot better than what we did with the temperature and the tint controls. Now you might be saying there's a little bit of blue in the highlights and in the shadows. So we're gonna take care of that as well. So on the highlights, I'll grab it and move it a little bit into the reds, maybe a little more to the yellow and green, a little more red. That's looking pretty good. And then just a nudge in the shadows. It's very easy to overpower the shadows. You can see right there, everything that I just moved. Okay, that looks much better than where we started off. Let's take a look at where we started. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, now the next thing that makes this so easy is because these scenes were shot very similarly. You know, honestly, those shadows look a little bit warm now. Okay, there we go. All right. So now we can grab this color effect, copy it, and then move over to our next clip. Because they're shot in similar scenes, actually this is not a good example of that. This one is though. And we can grab the clip and paste. And boom, our color is already ready to go. Super easy. Now this one, 
It's a little dark, so we really want to punch the exposure. So let's add a color effect. Go back to our correction and boost our contrast. Okay, don't want to get too bright. Now, it's also really dark in the shadows, so I'm going to grab my shadows and I'm going to push that as well. And maybe bring my blacks down just a little bit to give me some of that contrast back. All right, and this one's a little warm and I want it to match the other shot. So I'm gonna come here and maybe cool it off in the mid-tones just a little bit, not much. All right, that one's good to go now. So we'll keep scrubbing, we get to our next clip. This one is also one of these blue clips where we can grab our Lumetri color effect and then just copy and paste, already looks good. This one might be a little dark, so why don't we pump up the highlights a little bit. and maybe pull down the shadows. Really give it some contrast. Okay, that looks nice. We'll go to the next clip. We can paste. Looks pretty good. All right, so this is also an H.264 clip, so I'm just gonna trim my top LUT up here. Looks good. That looks good. Okay, and at this point, we are actually underneath this graphic. So we're all done with this sequence and the color correcting. Now, again, this is only for client review and it needs to look good, not perfect. Once we get this cut locked, then we'll send this off to a colorist and make it really sing. Okay, next up, let's take a look at what happens if we're only working with proxies. Now we're back at our same sequence, but this time we're working with our proxies on. So this means that we're not gonna have the log information that was baked into the original clips that we just colored. So in this case, we're not going to add the adjustment layer on top of these clips. We're only going to add Lumetri color effects to the clips themselves. Hey, it's Chris. Jumping in here to say that if the proxies were made with the LUT burned in, i.e. they still look faded, they're not Rec. 709, they don't look saturated, if that is the case, it might be worth going through the method one process and actually dropping the adjustment layer with a LUT on top of them. You won't have all of the same information, but it will give you a good head start to begin coloring. Okay, back at it. So let's take this one off and we'll start over. So this very beginning clip looks pretty good, maybe a little yellow. So let's add a Lumetri color effect, come here. And I again, I'm just gonna use the mids. We're gonna cool it off just a little bit. Maybe drag it over to the right. Okay, that's looking all right. And let's boost the contrast. Great, that'll work. Going to our next clip. So this one is super blue. All right, so again, we'll drop on a Lumetri, co Lumetri color effect, go to our color wheels, and we're gonna warm it up. So we're gonna go up, go up, and then drag to the left. Maybe a little green, go up some more. That's looking okay, maybe a little too red. A little green, that's all right. Next thing we're gonna do is warm up our whites, just a hair, nothing crazy. Same thing with not too much on our shadows because they're super powerful. All right, and let's go and push our exposure and our contrast. Bring that up, great. Contrast, it's still a little blue, huh? So we're gonna go back and fix that in just a second. Let's bring up our shadows as well. You can see that we don't have as much information as we had when we did the log footage. It's pretty interesting. All right, let's grab our mid-tones again. I really wanna get away from those blues, so I'm gonna push it into the red, maybe a little more yellow. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, that's nice. Now, maybe a little bit on the whites. We're gonna bring that up some. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. All right, again, this is for offline. So we'll grab that Lumetri color effect, go over. Not gonna do this clip, but this clip, we can just paste our effect. Looks good, still pretty blue there. All right, so let's grab our whites and we're gonna push this up into the red, move it over to the yellow, really balance it out. Okay, looking much better. And keep in mind, I'm only using my eyeballs. We're not popping in the scopes because we just need this to look good for a review export. It doesn't have to be what we're gonna deliver to the client. Uh, we should spend a lot more time on the color if that were the case. All right, we're gonna come over here. I'll grab this same Lumetri color effect, paste. Doesn't look too bad. Let's go check this guy out. Add the effect, bring in some exposure. It's very contrasty already. I wanna boost the shadows so it's not so dark. 
you can see how noisy it gets now that we're not using the log footage. It's pretty nasty. But again, that's okay because it's an offline cut. Let's bring this back down though, because it's almost too much, even for an offline review file. All right, so we'll come here. Let's go ahead and paste over here. Looks all right. These are our H.264 clips, not much to do there. Okay, and we are in good shape. All right, and that wraps up a quick and easy way to do color correction for offline edits. If you wanna really dig into how to get good quality color correction inside of Premiere Pro or especially inside of DaVinci Resolve, I would check out Kazi's YouTube channel. This guy has taught me so much and he will take your skills to the next level. We'll see you next time.